I think when I first saw Calendar, um, it really resonated with me because I kind of heavily identified with being a foreigner in a foreign land, even though you you know you want to very much feel as part of. Um, but because of your cultural difference or lack of understanding of the language, you feel isolated. So that was something that was really strong and it stayed with me for a long time. And then also kind of um, exploring loss in, you know, not, you know, in, 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 in a kind of nostalgic way in a, in a form of in cinema and kind of how that could be a healing, you know, um, as a, or to begin the healing process. So those were the, 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 the main reasons. And then also I wanted to do something, a first film that was manageable in terms of being an experiment as opposed to a orthodox traditional film where <clears throat> everything is written out and then made. So the, what you're seeing here, at least the Argentina part, which is inspired by Atom's film, it's, we, we did it in this kind of almost like a jazz ensemble where we took a basic idea, the scale, the, the structure of the story, and then of course created variations on the theme, as you say, um, and then we made the film kind of completely adapting the, to the nature where we were, and then also creating this kind of incredibly beautiful locations and scenery, but then this also very claustrophobic love triangle that's happening as the story unfolds. So those were the reasons. Well, no, I mean, the calendar is a fictional film, uh, but uh, a lot of people think it happened to me because I think it feels very real. Uh, but but it's but it's 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 uh, it's a fiction, you know. But uh, um, it, you know, I think you know, there's something that feels very immediate about it. But it, in some ways, it's uh, based a lot of my personal fears and anxieties. But I think what when I watch Albert's film, uh, you know, he takes it a step further. I mean, it it really he invests himself very personally in it. When you watch Calendar, the character I'm playing is very different from who I am. Uh, I would say, and Albert might punch me for saying it, but the character that Albert's playing is much closer to who he is than the character I'm playing in Calendar. Uh, but uh, they're both really personal films. I mean, I was dealing with themes that were very for me at that time in my life. And I was my wife, and um, and so there's a... There's a and, and Albert's, you know, also working with his uh, wife and mother of his child. So it's like it's there are a lot of links. But that's a good question. I mean, like didn't, when you say, well, like, did it really happen to you? Yes, I really did make that movie. That really did happen to me. I did make a movie. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, the the thing is that my film doesn't change. It's like I, I'm not, I'm not. He's not. Albert's not going back to my film and re-editing it. He's just using it as an inspiration, and that's fine. Albert's a friend, and so I had no problem with uh, giving permission for him to do that. I think that's uh, considered an honor uh, that the film is able to inspire that. Um, and uh, and I was just then delighted to see what Albert came up with, and and to see it develop and and uh, to to grow. You know, it took a long time for Albert to kind of. Uh, see it through these different phases and um, that was really gratifying that he took the care and uh, that he also lended his particular artistry he's a he's a really wonderful director of photography and so you really feel that when you see the film um, so it was a really gratifying process unusual rare I never had any doubt about it though like I just felt um, it was a, a natural extension to our friendship Um, so Maria, we, I, I will start with the Argentina part because that was, that's what we shot first. Maria was someone I met in London and I'd seen a film that she was the star of called The Holy Girl that Almadovar produced. And it was a beautiful film directed by an Argentinian woman named Lucrecia Martel. And I just fell in love with her as an actress. And then of course, months or years later, we ran into each other in, in London at Rough Trade Cafe and we became instantly friends. And then, and then when this idea came to make this film, I called her and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in doing this film. Would you be, uh, would you be interested in uh, coming on board? And she said, yes. And that was the beginning. And then she's the one, <clears throat> when I arrived in Argentina in Buenos Aires, she's the one who helped find Pablo. And Pablo was literally out of a list of five, six actors that she recommended. He was the first one. And when I sat down and met with him, it was in a cafe and... 
it's me, Maria, and Pablo, and we're just talking. And then by the end of the conversation, we just realized that that's the film. There's going to be no, he will never have to speak English. I will never have to speak Spanish. And we're going to have to communicate through a third person. And so, and yeah, and Pablo was a godsend because he's from Patagonia. So he knew the land like the back of his palm. And then, he, you know, and then, yeah, great actors. And then, of course, the, Argent, the American actor, we did a traditional audition in L.A. Uh, where I saw and I chose Anthony. I think Albert's a really good actor. I, I, I consider myself to be uh, uh, reluctant, and uh, I, it embeds me in the movie in a, in a way that I wasn't expecting. It makes it kind of uncomfortable. I don't enjoy watching myself on screen at all. I just am not, I'm not a big fan of uh, my own... Uh, mannerisms and ticks. I'm a huge fan of Albert, so, so I'll just watch Albert, you yeah, know, for, Albert. yeah. In, uh, yes, um, like many things in the film, um, unbelievable kind of gifts, because I remember actually that scene that you're referring to with the, with the cave. We had already started like rapping and we were leaving, and it was only an afterthought to shoot this silhouette of them from inside the cave. Right, so I'm getting goosebumps just remembering that because it was really an afterthought. I was like, guys, guys, please bring the camera. I want to do one more thing, and I put the camera in the dark of the cave and just shot. And everyone was in a hurry because we had to get out of there. And I, and then, and then, and then we shot this film without traditional video assists. You know, like I shot on 16, and everything was just what I saw in the in the camera. Like hardly nothing with us to watch things. And, and then when we were editing it, just seeing how Maria's body like melts into his in the silhouette. And it was nothing that I de said to them to do. I just told them, just walk and you know, experience what you were going to do that you asked him to do, which we, meaning the photographer. And they just, she just naturally just kind of walked up to him. And then at this moment created this silhouette of as if two people become one. And then she's like slowly walks away and then goes and just melts into the rocks. And it was just like one of those gifts, you know, yeah. that you could never, I, w I would never write it. I would never be, have the discipline to sit down and write that and then go shoot it. But I'm very open to finding those things when they do happen as you're making a film. Uh, well, it's, it's Albert's choice. I mean, I shot calendar on film uh, and video at the time, you know, the two in the early 90s when I shot it, it was two distinct forms and um, a, a lot of the structure of the film was the interplay between the two. The fact that film um, took a lot of, uh, first of all, it cost a lot. Uh, we didn't have a lot of stock, uh, so it was very measured, very controlled, very uh, specific as opposed to the video, which was incredibly liberating as a filmmaker at that time, you could just shoot without having to worry about running out or cost. And that is very much reflected as a film made in 1992. You feel that that tension. I think what's incredible about Albert's film is that he's, uh, he's a filmmaker working now in the digital age, but he's made this decision to go back to film stock, both 16 and 35. The only other filmmaker I know who's used those two textures quite this way is, uh, is there was a, a, by a, a, a French filmmaker making a film called La Mort Fou, like Mad, Mad Love, Jacques Rivette, uh, used that texture in the 60s uh, as a granular sort of exploration between the two stocks. Um, so he's using a, a really old technique to tell his story, um, but I think it gives it this very special energy. Yeah, uh, well, for me, I mean, kind of growing up and w working and loving film so much and, and, and seeing all these European films that left a big impression on my kind of career, um, it was just kind of as a first film, I just couldn't imagine doing it on anything else other than film. And at that time, I'd already become such a kind of accomplished and comfortable cinematographer where to me film was just something I knew. I just knew what it would look like. I didn't, I didn't have to look at the monitor. I didn't need to see playbacks. I just knew that by just trusting the light meter and trusting what I'm doing that the, the, I will get the results that we're looking for. And then of course also being very kind of open to happy accidents, which there's many of in the film, especially like there's a scene when they're crossing the bridge and you watch the dailies and your first reaction is like, oh my God, it's all out of focus. And then you watch it in the movie and you think, oh my God, their relationship is dissolving right on the camera. And that's what the camera is doing. It's like showing their kind of fading away of their relationship. So in, in a way, kind of there was 
this openness to experiment with film and kind of allow you know things that happened in film that digital doesn't really have in terms of the way the light shines through the lens and then of course in LA same with 35 millimeter there was just kind of wanting to have this separation because you know when you watch the film the Argentina part could be interpreted as a dream it could be interpreted as his past or it could be interpreted as the film within the film and that's up to the viewer to decide but for me I just knew that the separation between the stocks you know 16 on Fuji 35 on Kodak that you would have this inherent separation in terms of the two looks yeah the composers um, the first the composers who did this Kevin Haskins who's a dear friend of mine uh, the drummer of Bauhaus and Love and Rockets and I asked him to make the music for this and then he brought on um, Xander Schloss who is a legend Z Xander did the Alex uh, Alex he did the Walker and Sid and Nancy uh, with the singer of the clash um, Joe Strummer and then and then so he's an incredible guitar player and then uh, when we made the score we he was using a lot of authentic instruments from you know Latin countries from Argentina the guitar on the ukulele all kinds of uh, acoustic instruments and then what 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 Kevin did was so brilliant was like all the electronic stuff the punk post-punk English sound and then all of a sudden when you watch the film when as we're going from one country to the next the music stays the same but then the sounds change it's just yeah it was a beautiful one of my favorite experiences I remember that when we were recording the piano because I really wanted to have a live piano in the film and then we did that and then and then the guy who mixed the soundtrack you know uh, Daryl Thorpe who's done many albums with Radiohead you know one of my favorite musicians in the world so that was pretty very very rewarding and then of course when we made the original songs for the film then you know then Andrea Silva and Alvi Buffalo came in and wrote seven songs for the film which just was just a gift from God and um, I'm, I'm grateful for them eternally for having done that so and then and then of course what what that, that that did to the end result which you just recently saw is that it gives this really coherent kind of emotional arc and and, and kind of uni, you know unison vision. I, I think it's a cautionary tale, right? To lovers to heed and to be care, you know, kind of be careful what they wish for and um, just take, be not take beauty and nature for granted in any form. Um, coming to terms with loss. Say three words. S somewhere really beautiful. 